Well, welcome everybody to another one of my videos, and here we are in my attic, uh, on with my wall generator here, and connected to my LEDs, 50 LEDs, and it's working fine until I stop cranking and then it stops. Now the idea then is to take something like a telephone battery here and to see if I can charge that uh, with a few cranks and see how long it's going to last me so I don't have to crank it all the time. Uh, there is a problem though. If I connect the uh, telephone battery into the line and give that a spin, it will charge the battery. But unfortunately there's something here that as soon as I stop going it drains and stops again. Now why is that? That's because when the generator is now generating and that's fine and charging the battery but as soon as I stop generating it turns back into a motor and then consumes the electricity that it has only just generated. Now for a bit of theory if we had a bicycle tire and we want to put some air in it, which you usually do. There is a tube that you can put that in, and with your pump, you pump it in. And here we have an arrow, you pump it in. But if you take the pump off, all that air suddenly comes out. So we have something in there called a valve. And in electricity, we have something very similar. It's called a diode. And a diode is basically an electrical valve, and it looks like this, a cylinder with two wires coming out and a black, a silver or a red line on one end. So it's cylindrical with a line like that. Now what it does, and the symbol for that is it, it says the electricity flows one direction and it's going in a direction and then there's a line that says, oh, that's our valve. And it goes like that. So the electricity goes in the direction of the valve but it can't come back. Similarly, it's like a bucket as well. If you poured water into this, if it was like that, it would be a bucket. You fill it up and it would drain out a hole down the bottom. But if you try to pour water the other direction, this way, it would hit the bottom of the bucket and, walk and drain off and not flow. So basically, the electrical equivalent of a valve is the diode. And we're going to use that so that when the electricity comes from the generator, when it's generating it will go one way, charge up the battery and when I stop uh, cranking the handle it hits our valve, won't flow back and won't turn the motor back into a motor. So I'm going to take one of the wires in the line, uh, I don't think it matters which one but I'll take the positive which is red here and then disconnect that, connect an alligator clip extension here and then to that connect the diode with the red or silver line on the opposite side of that because it's going to fill up the bucket and then drain out the hole and then connect that and now we'll give it a crank and yes now we're generating and now when we stop the generator it has charged that to a degree now it's not giving me much charge because basically this battery's dead and it won't hold any hard hold a charge. Now that one was out of a dead phone so it's not going to hold much but it does have something. Now out of a dead camera was this one. It had died so it's going to give me a little bit more but uh, not huge amounts more. And there it is basically stopped and it is giving me a few more. It'll give me about a minute this one before it gets down to an unuseful sort of brightness. Now the next one I try was uh, three uh, lithium ion batteries, they'll give me 1.2 volts each. That one's reasonably good, those are on the way out and dying. But they'll give me 4 volts, uh, uh, sorry 3.6 volts uh, and it lights quite brightly and with that it will give me approximately two to three minutes of bright light and another ten minutes or so I think it was that I measured it at about half brightness. The next battery I tried was one from a Blackberry telephone. Uh, it's got a plastic thing so I had to connect some wires to the plastic wires there. It's in reasonable condition I think because when I give it a few cranks it gives me full brightness for a good five minutes and about half half light for about ten minutes 
and after half an hour to three quarters of an hour the bulbs are still slightly glowing so it holds a reasonable amount of energy this one this is probably the best one so far now if we go back to the situation without the batteries and diodes and things uh, if we go in one direction with the generator it will generate the electricity but if I go back the other way because the diodes are acting like little valves each LED is actually a diode so the electricity goes one direction but it won't go the other direction so it will let the electricity flow and create light in one direction but it will stop the electricity going in the other direction so how can we get it so that whichever way we go forwards or backwards it will always light now if we had an alternating current motor also it also goes backwards and forwards in two directions and so we're only going to be using half of the electricity we can use all of the electricity if we can use some diodes in a fancy way so back to theory if we want electricity to always go in one direction we can have alternating current or backwards flowing current or any current going in two wires and then our positive and negative where we want it to go and if we want it to go always say in this direction then we can connect as four diodes or four wires connect them and make sure we put a diode here which is going to act as our valve in that direction so it's going to always go that way similarly we can have a diode on here that acts as a valve and can send it that way and if what electricity comes in this one it blocks it there and we'll put one on this one and it will flow that way and we'll put another one here so that it will also always flow the energy in that direction so that's a bridge rectifier and here's one that's made up in that configuration so you can see the alternating current coming in here in those two and the diodes will always funnel it from this direction or there or there always around in those directions and out the positive which is connected through here on the other side of the board so that is a bridge rectifier so we can put alternating current into there and get a pulsed uh, a, a direct current out or go backwards on our generator and still have it come out the right direction now the commercial ones also are made specifically for that and they're like something similar to this or a little smaller even so that they have two that are for alternating current and the negative and the positive so it'll go this way and any alternating current can come in here and out the positive in that direction so they're the commercial ones or they might be like this with four legs here an alternating alternating current on the two middle ones and a positive on this side and a negative on this side so it's always going to be going in that direction whether it comes in through those any of those three it'll go out that one more or less well you electricians will know better than me but that's the rough idea so now if we connect the two wires that come out of the generator onto either of the alternating current uh, inputs you know on opposite corners and connect the positive to the lights and the negative to the negative of the lights I can wind it in any direction that's forwards and backwards and it will always make sure that that electricity flows in one direction through the lights so now I can do it in any direction or I can even use an alternating current generator and get twice as much useful energy out of it Now if you're going to make a uh, bridge rectifier, where can you get your diodes from? Look on some electronic boards like this and you'll find them, they're little, those little black things here. And you can unsolder those and reuse those. Uh, and uh, on this board they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them on this board. So that will be useful. Um, another useful place is old dead light bulbs of these long lasting ones because they actually have a little electronic board inside also and on this one there we have a one two three four five six uh, of them there we also have a transistor a capacitor and a transformer and a few other bits and pieces but um, that's a good source of uh, little diodes for your project so let's make a bridge rectifier and I'm going to use those diodes from this dead uh, light bulb by first I'm going to unsolder 
those there. Be careful that you don't burn yourself. Now sometimes they're a little tricky to get out but if you can stick like uh, a needle or something under there and then put a little bit of pressure on and then heat it, hopefully it will pop out. Yes, there it is. And then all you have to do is then heat the other one, pull it out, and there you have your diode. Now actually I managed to get eight out of that one, so I'm just going to select four of them, one, two, three, four, that have got decent leads and things, and then I'm going to bend them so they're going to lie flat, sort of like that, in a similar position to what they were already. Then I'm going to take a, a flattened piece of PVC pipe, put them on top to measure out where I'm going to drill some holes. Basically the distance of that, one, two, three, four, and then one out on each of those. Then with a drill, I'm going to drill those four, uh, those eight holes. So there we have it, and how we're going to organize our diodes. Let's look at that again. And remember we've got our four holes here, and we're going to be putting a diode in that sort of a square pattern. And each of the legs is going to share the, the hole, like that. Now if we were to say that this is going to be our positive wire and this our negative wire here, we need to put the diode so that the silver line is here, here. Always remember the bucket filling up with the hole in the bucket going draining towards the positive. And similarly there and there draining to here. And those are going to be your two alternate current going in there. So we can now place those diodes into the board. And just so they don't fall out, we'll put a piece of tape on top. And placing them between the, the two wires there, solder them on. And when you get those done, feed the wire through the closest hole just to give it some strength. Then you can take off the tape. Now to connect it into the circuit. So here we have the bridge rectifier and here's the positive and the negative opposite and the two uh, alternate current, alternating current or any current um, opposite. So we're going to take the positive and the negative of the generator and connect it to either of those. It doesn't matter because it's not doesn't matter. And then take the positive and the negative that are left and connect the positive and the negative of the lights to it and then test it. Give it a spin and yes in one direction good, other direction good. Now we're going to connect our uh, Blackberry battery to that by taking the negative and joining it to the negative at the same time which is a little tricky but we'll try joining those two and taking the positive of the Blackberry and the positive of the generator and joining those two at the same time and there we have generation and storage in one direction generation and storage in the other direction and if it's an alternate current uh, motor we can go in either direction it doesn't matter and it will give us the full wavelength and that will give me five ten minutes worth of light in my attic so that will give me a good five or ten minutes of light in my attic. 